perspective on the UK general election. We're joined from Boston by Anthony Pereira. He's a professor at King's College London. Uh, Anthony, uh, give me your take on this. Uh, the uh, opinion polls leading up to this saying it was going to be very, very close. You just heard Richard Bestick. It, it looks as though uh, the Conservative Party has done well tonight. Yeah, Mike, I think there is some debate about how accurate the exit polls are. I mean, he, he, the, your correspondent is absolutely right. The exit polls in 2010 were entirely accurate. I mean, I think the question is how, how accurate these are. But if they're correct, um, two of the big losers of this election are Labour, whose vote uh, seems to have dropped by about 18 percent in Scotland, and the Lib Dems, whose vote has fallen by 16 percent from 2010. So those are, those are big shifts for those two parties. The parties uh, very well versed in uh, courting older voters. We've done a couple of stories about uh, the social media campaigns, trying to get the young people out to the polls. Uh, is this an election where younger, younger voters actually could make a big difference? I think so. We saw them make a huge difference in the referendum in Scotland. Uh, 16 to 18 year olds voted 71 to 29 percent in favor of Scottish independence. So they really uh, got out the vote and they, 80 percent of them voted in that election. Be interesting to see if they vote in, in great numbers in this election. We know that in the last general election, 2010, 18 to 24 year olds voted at a rate of 44 percent. That was the lowest of all age groups and in fact almost half the rate of over 65s. Uh, my own view is that this election had a lot, uh, there was there were significant differences between the parties on this. There was a lot at stake. Uh, the Conservatives promised to have a referendum on Europe in 2017. Labor was against that. Uh, Labor promised to lower tuition fees in universities. Conservatives were against that. Labor promised to end the non-DOM tax status of, uh, and Conservatives opposed that. So. One of the interesting things, I think, if, if we are going to have a referendum on Europe in 2017 under conservative leadership, uh, the polls, some surveys suggest that young people in, in Britain are less Eurosceptic than older people. Uh, one survey done by the British Election Study in 2010 suggested that only 22 percent of 18 to 24 year olds were against Europe, in other words, or in favor of uh, UK pulling out of Europe. So this could, this could uh, really dominate politics in the UK for the next two years uh, if the Conservatives form a government. Anthony, uh, you're, you're cautioning, and I think it's a, a good point. I mean, a poll is a poll. It's actually the votes that, that count. But, but the turnout in the, uh, the Scottish referendum, you talked about that. It looks as though the Scottish nationalists are, are going to trounce Labour north of the border. What do you make of that vote? Well, I think this might uh, add fuel to the fire to the Scottish Nationalist campaign, especially uh, if the Conservatives form a government and you have a referendum in 2017, because the SNP will claim, well, the conditions under which we had the referendum in 2014 have now changed. You've now got uh, a UK that's considering leaving the European Union. The SNP is pro-Europe. Uh, so they may use that referendum as a reason for putting the uh, independence issue back on the political agenda, even though it's only been, it's been less than a year since it was uh, decided uh, in, the, in the previous referendum. Can I ask you about voting habits? In the, in, it's, it's a bit of a curiosity to me. Looking at the polls leading up to the actual election, uh, it looked like it was going to be razor thin. And if this latest uh, exit poll is accurate, uh, it looks as though the conservatives are, are going to win tonight. Um, this was sort of the same pattern we saw in Israel. Netanyahu looked like he was in trouble. Uh, he did OK. Uh, Rousseff in Brazil. What does this tell us about the electorate? Are they afraid of change? Uh, are they not being honest when they're being polled? I mean, what are we to read into all of this? I think it's a bit of both of what you mentioned. Conservatives will tell you there's a hidden conservative vote that doesn't come out in surveys. There's a certain party electorate that seems somewhat embarrassed about saying they're going to vote conservative, and the actual vote tends to be a little higher than the survey results. I think another thing is that the conservative argument was that there would be a chaos, there'd be economic chaos, and that you couldn't trust labor on the economy, and that might have hit home a bit. Um, so I think it's a little bit, it's a, it's a combination of um, the conservative campaign being effective to some degree, maybe the labor campaign uh, not being as effective, but also an undercount of the, uh, of the of voter intentions. Anthony, on the uh, thanks so much for your analysis. Appreciate you joining us from Boston.
thanks very much.